Hey everybody, Nate here. Another update on the Overland truck. A little bit of progress the last couple days. Not a whole lot. It's been kind of busy around here and just kind of figuring some things out. But I do have the mounts for the air tanks done. So the two longer tanks are gonna sit up here. One there, one there, connections in the middle. The lower wet tank is gonna sit down below. I just kind of touched up paint everything so it's just hanging. Those aren't mounted. Um, new air dryer is going to go back here close to the factory spot with the through um, fitting for the airline. And that's kind of it on this side. We're still working on that. Um, the cab is currently stuck up and that's going to be coming down soon once we get some parts that we're waiting for in. Um, what else? I put the water tank. I just set the water tank in here. So this is 95 gallons of fresh and it's going to sit around that area somewhere. I might slide it back a little. I'm not entirely sure, but this is my secondary tank. That's going to be outside of the habitat. So the main tank is going to be back here in the inside of the habitat under the sofa in the back. That's gonna fill in gravity fill to here. That's gonna go out to the pump. Um, I'm gonna have a little T on here so you can not use this one in freezing weather if you don't want to. Um, you can just use the inside one, which is 135 gallons. So that'll help for cold temperature. Um, I mounted my hydraulic pump down here, kind of a little dead space that's not being used. Um, this is just a standard 12 volt like 3000 PSI hydraulic pump. And I think that's where it's gonna live for now. It's not in the way. Um, and I'm just not sure what I'm gonna do with the spools. I might run them back there and put them in a the cabinet, or I might run them up here and put them in a cabinet. But I'm gonna have six levers on that spool, one for the cab tilt up and down, one for each corner of the habitat that will level the habitat, and then I'm going to have one for the back, which will have a lift gate for the motorcycles and spare tires. So all of that's going to run off this one pump. I hope if I did the math right, um, we'll see. So I got to sort out where I'm going to put all that and find a hydraulic manifold that I like. Um, up here in this area is going to be my generator box and I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna mount that yet. I really don't want it hanging from the floor because the generator is gonna have some vibration and I'd rather have that isolated from the habitat if I can. If I can't do that, then I'll hang it from the floor and do like a double vibration isolation scheme inside for that. Um, here's the old fuel tank. If anybody needs a stock fuel tank, let me know because I've got one. It's dirty, but it's in good shape. I'll clean it up before it goes. Um, and again, there is the big fuel tank. That is about it for over here. Um, the ABS computer and polarity protection box, all that's going to get mounted to that headache rack somewhere, sometime soon, I hope. Oh, batteries. Putting my batteries. I'll walk over and show you those. So I'm only going to run two batteries for the starter. I don't really need anything more. This is my battery box. So I got two batteries in there with the hold down clamps. And that is gonna mount in this area inside the spare tire in the frame so I can get the batteries out the back um, pretty easily. Uh, so yeah, that is where those are gonna go. And we got the flooring somewhat done and kind of flipped over. So this is the floor, this is the front of the habitat um, kind of just like it sits there's the truck over there so this is the front driver's side corner the back driver's side corner yada 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 here we haven't done this section of flooring in here um, we're on the bottom anyway because this whole section all these three this whole size is going to be that slide out deck that's going to come out out here so I've got eight feet of deck inside. I can get six out here comfortably with the sliders that I've got 
and I'll show you guys that design um, as we kind of move forward on that. But my door is gonna be over here, entrance door. So this slider will be able to pull out just a little bit. Well, let me back up. So the stairs will mount here, or we can mount the slider out, and then we can put the stairs going this way. Like if you're in a you know small parking lot, and you just want a little deck up front or you don't have enough room, or this will come all the way out six feet and we'll have the stairs going up this way or going up the other side over here. And then this will all be nice big deck area. When you walk in, you'll have the kitchen sink over there, couch and dinette on that side. King size bed will drop down from the ceiling. This will be seven feet of countertop over here, washer and dryer, and then bathroom in that front corner. And then we're just gonna have storage across here storage on this side and then refrigerator here we're going to do a residential size fridge as big as we can fit in here so we don't have to worry about it um i just like having lots of fridge space i like having food not having to deal with going shopping every day um, plus if we're out at the beach for like a month in the middle of nowhere we're not going to run out of food so that'll be super cool and so there she is that's the floor um this is actually gonna be inside my floor. So this is all gonna get sealed up in here. And then this will be filled with foam. So this is four inches. So I have a four inch thick foam floor all throughout here. I think I'm gonna do radiant heating on top just to keep the flooring super nice, especially in the bathroom and the living area. And again, walls are still sitting over here. Haven't made any progress with those yet. So that's about it for today. Um, hopefully by Friday we will have another update. Oh, cab tilt. So here's what I learned on the cab tilt. This is interesting. So I hooked up this hydraulic pump and just hooked it up to a battery. It's got a little pendant down there you can see for control. And I just plumbed in some hoses real quick that I had and the cab would start to come down. It's coming down super fast. So it would like, and then stop. I have to go up a little bit and then it would stop and then it'd go up a little bit and then it'd stop and go up a little bit and it was a pain in the butt so there's a safety mechanism in that uh hydraulic ram i thought it was just in the old control box that was here but no it's actually in the ram and uh quaid was super nice enough to respond on facebook and show me where this is let me get my light out for you um but right there you can see that zerk fitting and that hole right above it that hole right above it is a little ball like a ball bearing and that ball bearing when there's too much flow on the downside of the cab it's a safety device so if there's too much flow that ball bearing goes in and stops the fluid and it locks the cab down this pump puts out like i don't know 20 gallons a minute or something. A pretty powerful pump because I wanted it to do the lift gate and everything. Um, way too fast for this cab. So I've got two options. One is, well, I really only have one option. I need to re restrict the amount of fluid going through that orifice so that the cab comes down slower. And this is a double action hydraulic ram because right now the cab's over center. It's not hooked up to anything. You can see one of the hydraulic hoses here the other one here, and the cab will stay like this because it's over center. So it needs pressure to start bringing it back. And then as soon as it comes over center, it wants to fall and it wants to fall fast. So I have to restrict that flow to keep that fall going nice and slow. One, so nobody gets hurt, nothing gets broken. And two, so that safety in that ram doesn't engage and lock it in the up position like it is now. So the solution to that is a needle valve and put a needle valve on that line basically that restricts the flow to keep that ball bearing from engaging the safety. Uh, Quaid said he drilled his out and then welded that hole shut. I'm gonna try not doing that because that's a lot of extra work. So I'm just gonna try putting that uh, needle valve on, adjusting it super slow, and then kind of opening it up from there and seeing how fast I can get the cab to come down without activating that safety and then lock it all in. So that's pretty much it. There she is for today. Um, I will be back towards the end of the week. 
to give you guys another update. Any questions, let me know, and uh, we'll see you guys then. Take care.